week six in the Big Brother house. Nathan has found out four more fucking bad news about his name. Welcome back to another episode of the YouTube. It is quarter past eight on the 20 something of July. I ain't got a fucking clue. These days roll into each other. And last week was super, super fucking eventful. Um, I thought I was being a massive pussy, right? So five weeks after the surgery, I'm still in loads and loads of pain. Can't really do my rehab, really relying on tramadol, sleeping on the sofa still. Five weeks sleeping on the sofa has been fucking brutal. I'm not getting a full night's sleep. I'm thinking, fucking hell, this is shit. Like this knee replacement stuff, 80 year old people get this and it's easier. What's wrong with me? So I go to my physio, Anil, uh, shout out Anil from uh, the, the Bidea Clinic. Uh, fucking sick guy. Uh, and, and I'm gonna talk more about those guys in a minute. I'm like, dude, let's all just hand my leg because there, there's still got to be something going on, right? Long behold, and he's doing well. And he's doing fantastic. But what isn't doing fantastic is three massive calf tears. I've got a calf tear and my deep gastro, uh, gastrocnemius. I'll put a picture up of where the gastroc and where these are in a minute. Is 35 millimeters wide, 15 millimeters high. So I'll see if I can get the ultrasound videos off, off John today. John's the guy that did the ultrasound, so I'm gonna go and see him because I've got some more treatment. Got one of those, got one on the uh, superficial layer as well, a little bit smaller, and then got one right up near the back of my knee. And then I've got also two fucking cysts at the back of my knee which uh, are swelling and have like synovial fluid within them. Cysts, like uh, they're called popliteal cysts, so within the popliteal fossa, which is behind the knee, there's these pockets of, they're just pocket, it's just like a pocket of nothing. But when the knee is injured or has like uh, various levels of like uh, rejuvenating synovial fluid, which is effectively the thing that lubricates the joint, when you get excess number of that, because obviously your, jo your joint is in deficiency, you get excess amount of that, it drips into these uh, popliteal faucets and um, create these cysts, so they're ball sack full of synovial fluid. I've got two of those motherfuckers. And when they swell up, then they compress the back of your the back of your leg where your calf is, where your hamstring attaches onto, and there's just more pain and more compression and more forces that act up into unnecessary pain. So we've got that dealing with as well. So I'm going to go and see John uh, today, who is the guy that had the ultrasound. He's a general GP practitioner, specialises in like hormonal ther uh, hormone therapy replacement, echocardiograms, you name it, ultrasound. He's a fucking don. And we just stumbled on by accident because um, Anil was referred to me by Rushab, shout out Rushab uh, at um, R&D Physio in the UK. Very, very good dude, would trust him with my fucking life. Um, so check him out and we'll tag him here. He was like, go and see Anil. Uh, so I went to go and see Anil. We had a good few sessions at the beginning and it was really like really good quality uh, physio. And then I said, look, I need to get this checked out. So we got the ultrasound in, John came in and uh, yeah, we found loads of shit, right? So. It means that the rehab's going to be slower because we've got to go and fix these calf tears. So today, I completely forgot what these injections are, what I'm going to get, but I'm going to go down the route of like getting some injections into the muscle be uh, bellies of where the tears are to rejuvenate them. There's three different ones. I'll, I'll tell you what they are later because I forgot what they were when he was telling me. I was just like, give me. Um, and then we're going to get some infrared stuff done to pr uh, promote the healing process, which is just a, it's like an infrared light that creates heat in a specific area. Heat then creates this oscillations and vibration process which then promotes healing. So it's really, really important that that gets done. Generally with these injections, he said that he had someone that, that was supposed to be six to nine months away from like any type of rehab or, or any type of exercise. And that they basically got him down to doing exercise within three months post having these injections. So for a muscle tear, you know, you're looking at normally six to eight weeks out uh, with normal rehabilitation processes. This looks like it's gonna be uh, probably three to four weeks max so very very happy about this for sure so that's that's it like it's been fucking shit sleeping on the sofa um so my morning is now consisting of some coloring a baked protein cookie because i'm still on a diet i've lost how many i've lost 20 pounds since the surgery five weeks ago uh we've finally got to go ahead uh to put some more uh juice back in the gears because now i'm by training so um we're very excited to put the old prima bowling back in this week which is very exciting um, and regain that 20 pound loss. I don't think all of it is is muscle, but definitely not all of it is fat, unfortunately. So I'll give you an update next one on like what happened. So pre-operation, I was 82 kilos. Post-operation, now I'm 73 kilos. Like, what do I look like in differences? Uh, and I'll show you that because I've got my check-in on Friday with, with Christian, and I'll go through that and compare the pictures and give you a bit of a rundown of what I've done over the last five weeks to drop 20 pounds. Not exciting, trust me. And and then we'll go from there from like a day in a life perspective. But this morning it's protein cookie because I don't want to eat a full meal yet and I'm saving my food for later. Uh, we've got 
a nice little gift from TMP Kieran, uh, Kieran uh, Neil, who is just the fucking don. Anything to do with mental performance, you know, is he a therapist? Yeah, he probably wouldn't call himself so, but I like to call him that because I think that's what he offers at me every single time we have a conversation. Uh, but he sent me uh, these little colouring uh, colouring gifts, which is about releasing your anger. And apparently there's really, really good research on adults colouring and being able to create like a meditative, uh, mindful state. And I can tell you the first time I did this was about three weeks ago, th probably about three weeks into the surgery. I did it and I started crying, like after, you know, colouring in for like five minutes. That's how like kind of stressed and uh, anxious and, you know, deeply saddened I was by obviously uh, all the pain that was going on. So guys, if you're struggling, fucking colour. Uh, so uh, this is probably the second time I'm going to do it. I need to get into more of a consistent routine. Uh, I really, really took a massive back step in terms of work. I realised that since the surgery, I was working 14 hour days, non-stop since the surgery and having very limited sleep, waking up every two hours, etc. So I was running on a really big red line. At the same time, uh, about two weeks ago, uh, I was like fully in charge of the other business that I help out because Adam was away. So like, I was fully in charge of two businesses at that moment in time uh, and the stress was uh, really high. Uh, the sleep was really, really low. The pain was really high, sleeping on the sofa. So um, I've now cut back on my workload. I don't start work until 12 anymore. So 12 until like nine. So I still do nine hours work, but I'm not, not working in the mornings because I need to chill out and relax. And if I get a poor night's sleep, I need to be able to get some extra Zs uh, in that morning time as well. So morning time now, and definitely this is the first day for it, is a bit of coloring, a bit of journaling. Then I've got to go, and do, I've got to, go to the Bader Clinic uh, at 10 to go for some injections. So I'll take you with me there. And then it's the OTE call, which I'm going to be presenting on how to set up nutrition uh, for online coaches which is what we do weekly we, we we give these guys the ultimate tickets to being able to be a better coach overall uh, getting better results with their own clients you don't need that marketing stuff we don't need the fucking sales tactics yeah you need to learn them but you need to be a fucking good coach first so this is my job that's my main priority outside of autonomy and get people in amazing shape myself and uh, dealing with the, the the niches that i do i help other people get amazing results and you know if they listen they will get better results. Um, so we're going to do that and then we're going to be recording a podcast um, hopefully because Adam Lowe, a good friend of mine and Jakey Boy, um, he who we had uh, his dog over uh, the other week, uh, I think we put him on the vlog, I think so. Um, they're over and we're going to do a podcast downstairs and we're going to start doing a little bit more podcasting, um, a little bit more longer form stuff on YouTube because YouTube seems like it's the way to go. I've been watching so much YouTube recently that it just seems like this is the place to put a lot of long form content and then snip it up into short form content too. So we're going to be, uh, we're going to be putting, we'll do some fitness, uh, fitness based uh, podcasting where it's not over Zoom, it's not the fucking stuff we just see in people's screens pop up, it's legitimately just having a conversation about fitness in the same room as you each other and I think every single podcast that I watch that has it over Zoom or it's got the, the the connection issues, it just doesn't get me enticed into it. Whereas I'm watching like No Jumper, I'm watching the Patreon Flagrant, I'm watching fucking Joe Rogan, I'm watching um, what's that dude, uh, Happy Healthy Billionaire Steve uh, Stephen Bar uh, Bartlett. You're watching those, you're engrossed because there's no issue from Zoom or there's there's just good quality production. So we're going to try and replicate that for the fitness thing because I don't see that don't see that happening a lot of the fitness stuff is definitely done in different rooms etc etc so we're going to have those nice conversations uh, and uh, take you through some stuff and hopefully it'll be really of value the rest of the day is normal day in the life of nathan johnson so no training today because i'm getting these injections i don't know how wounded i am going to be so apart from that it's time for some coloring and a baked cookie peace Also, here's a lesson for you that I've learned very, very valuably over the last couple of weeks. Surgeons don't give a shit about you after they've had the surgery. Now I had to learn this the, the really hard way and I'm really disappointed actually. You know, I had the surgery with uh, Paul and everything was good, post-operatively, 7 to 14 days, he was on it, he was like, yeah, come and see me, let's do this, let's do that. And then he got to like, 20 days out and then the messages started to grow less and the uh, the willingness to drop the hat let's go and have, let's go and have a check out the uh, the knee become less then I message him and he comes back with one word answers and then then 
the epitome of the whole conversation, which I'm like now fuck fuck surgeons for post operative care, like they don't give a shit about you as much as they care at the beginning. I text him about the whole tear thing because he was unhappy with the rehab process. He wasn't happy that I was only getting 90 degrees. He was unhappy that I was always in pain, right? So he was like kind of blaming me for not moving it and I was blaming him because he didn't give me enough painkillers. Um, and then I send him a message about why the rehabilitation has probably gone slower because of these tears. And he just, puts, he just sent me a message about saying, okay. I spent 20 grand on you, £20,000 on your ability to get me back to where you promised me. You said in four weeks time I'd be you know, going back to the gym, which I have been. You said in six weeks time I'd be fucking running, but it doesn't look like he gives a shit anymore and that's okay. But I just learned that very, very valuable lesson, you know. I guess, does it relate back to online coaching? I think it does. I think, you know, people need your coaching program, you want to do the best for them, and you want to do as much as you can do. But then when they're outside of that kind of window, do you stop caring about them? No, you just, you don't, you don't be a dick to them. Just because you paid the money and they've done their perceptive job. Now your job was to get me back to, to where I was before and, and uh, support me through it. And if that wasn't the job, then fucking hell, so just cunts, bro. So, luckily I had uh, Rusha, Neil and, and John on hand um, to, to help me with this, otherwise I would have been fucked. The guy just messaging back okay to some of my messages, me asking for more pain meds, him ign ignoring that message. You know, I'm in Dubai, I don't have a general practitioner, I don't have a, uh, you know, I don't have private medical insurance, I don't have anyone to just go to, but oh yeah, give me some more drugs. He was the guy, you know, he was the only guy that I knew in Dubai that would help, that was prescribing, prescribing pain meds, that was doing bits and bobs, that was supporting me through this process outside of Millie. And Adam and Sandy, and Jake and Mom. So to just be like, okay, after I said, hey, I've got some calf tears and that's why the rehabilitation process is slower. And you don't, you don't want any back and forth, or you won't have a conversation about it, fuck you. I learned that very, very valuable lesson, so. Just be wary. Just be fucking wary. So anything within the results-based business, you can take this into online coaching and PT as well. When the result is a paid-for service, so it's like, I pay you for this and then you deliver that. No matter how much they bang on about what they can do afterwards or the support that they're going to give you, be wary because that's what they're paying for. They're paying you. They're paying for that result. You're paying for that. You're paying for that that knee replacement and that's all you're paying for. Everyone else should deal with the rest of the stuff. So just be wary. I'm gonna go back to journaling now because I just remembered that during my journal session. I was like, fuck that guy, but I need to tell people. What I'd wish to be going sitting down there right now instead of going to get some injections. <sighs> Millie fucking hates this top. All these top, I've got a few of them now. I think they look fucking sick. Look at stacked. But no, fucking four pound for a t-shirt. I'm all, not all about this Gucci gang, I'm all about the four pound t-shirts and you get 25 of them and you just wear them with you want to wear them. We're at the clinic, but you guys in the UK that think you got a fucking heat wave, look, it's 45 fucking degrees outside. You don't know what it's like. I know you, we have AC and all that type of stuff, but outside is wild here. And it's, what is it, 10 o'clock? It's probably 45 degrees? Mental. And uh, I still don't need ice cream like half my UK clients who get a bit of sunshine and, oh, I need ice cream. Nope. None of that over here. I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna get a coffee inside, iced coffee. And uh, get, on, get on with this, uh, fuck shit myself to be honest, injections into my calf. Last time I had anything into my calf was like these acupuncture needles and the needles bent because of how tight my calves were. It's gonna be a nightmare. So I've had the injections, they weren't as bad as I thought they were, but fucked every single time, like getting jabbed. Now, it looks like a sunbed, but this is a light bed, infrared bed that helps promote healing. Now, apparently I'm not going to get a tan, which I'm quite disappointed about, but let's go and see what this is about. I'm gonna get some time of fucking sweating. 
I have my leg for 20 minutes, it's fucking brutal. But, let's see if it works. So, that was cool. Um, Injections done. They were. I didn't take the um, I didn't take the video with the, the injections because uh, I don't know if you're allowed to do that on Instagram, but uh, on Instagram, sorry, YouTube. Um, so uh, I got injected with a few different compounds. Uh, one was tra trauma, 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 and the other one was lied or something. I can't remember what the other one was. All I know is that those two are one's pain relief and one's an anti-inflammatory. And then the other one that they talk is the regenerative processes that help with the the muscle tears. So. Uh, it was really good to talk to John. John is a fucking nice dude. Uh, explained to me. I, I know I did a little bit of a piece before about complaining about the G, uh, the the surgeon, but actually he mentioned to me about the the particular problems. They the the surgeons only care that you get to like ninety degrees. You only care that you're not in pain, and they don't really care about functional performance. Whereas obviously I'm a thirty year old dude. Performance is the key. I want to get back to where I'm better better than I was doing before. So he explained to me that really well. Totally understood. And he just said, look, in a year's time you're gonna definitely be doing all the things that you wanna do. It's just gonna be a slow process. I was like, okay, cool, fine. So uh, the bed was interesting, it was warm. It was like a sunbed, but uh, apparently I didn't get tan from it, which is, I think you should do a mixture of both. So you get a little bit of a tan, you also get the, the, uh, the infrared. Uh, but apart from that, it was, uh, we're now just back at home. We're just setting up for the uh, the OT webinar, and then we got the, the podcast afterwards. So excited, um, excited, excited, excited. Um, Thursdays are for me are talking days where I just do lots and lots of talking. Uh, but I'm feeling very rested. We, uh, we moved the bed today, so I've been sleeping on the sofa and it's been incredibly difficult for both of us because I've been sleeping on the sofa, Millie comes out of bed, she then doesn't have anywhere to chill in the morning because she gets up before I do, so we made a really concerted effort yesterday to push half the sofa into the bedroom and then, because I can only sleep on the sofa because it's so soft as opposed to a hard duvet uh, and um, a, a bed in. So we slept in there, it was better than normal and then she got to do her morning routine which is really awesome and then I got to come up and chill in bed for a bit as well. So. Things seem to be only up and up. Um, today, we're going to cover nutritional setups within the, the Rockstar Delivery. It's all about how, get, how to get clients uh, set up at the beginning to get them losing weight. Now, one of the biggest things around losing weight and obviously uh, being in a fat loss phase for a long period of time is going to be what, how the fuck are you doing it? So on a day to day, what are you actually doing? You know, a lot of people give you the, the science behind fat loss and think about insulin, it's calories, it's this, that and the other. Well, it is calorie deficit, that's the most important thing. But how you get in it is determining on how long you stay on your diet for. If you're gonna do unsustainable methods like Cambridge diet or you know things in which require you to do something very, very aggressive that are very outside of your normal lifestyle, it's gonna suck for you. Because the more you go outside of your lifestyle or the further you go outside of those extremes, the harder it is to maintain an extremist mindset without getting pinged back to reality at some point. The key to a, a good good diet or a good sustainable diet is, and sustainable diet means one thing, you sustain a diet, not sustain a lifestyle. So lifestyle and dieting are two separate options, but sustaining a diet means utilizing a method that fits in with your lifestyle, that gives you food flexibility, that provides some structure in your daytimes, gives you boundaries, and it allows you to repeat that on a day-to-day -day basis. If you've got a diet that does that, that isn't extremist where you're like, oh, I can only do this for four weeks because after that I'm gonna be fucking to go, if I see a pizza, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go and murder it. If you're on a diet like that, you're on the wrong diet, you're gonna fall off, you're gonna get fat again. So make sure you're on something in which if you go off it and you only tweak it, you can still tweak it and still manipulate. You should be flexible in your approach and you should be rigid with your boundaries. And that's really, really important from a, from a dieting perspective. And we're going to teach these guys how to set that up for clients on a day-to-day -day basis and be super, super clear on the results that they can get with their, their, their clients and their mentees and stuff like that. So really, really excited. But the keys are never think about... The mechanics are really important. Calories, protein, fats, why we eat certain types of foods on diets, why we have certain types of uh, thought processes around it are really important. But the method is more important than the mechanics because you could do 100% of the mechanics in a diet that you're not going to sustain and you won't last very long on a diet, it won't be successful dieting. Whereas if you use a method that's really, really good for you, but you're only doing 70% of the mechanics, like it may not worry about bits and bobs or you're not as detailed orientated as someone else, you're actually going to get better results because you're going to stick to it. You're going to stick to something that is a method that fits into what you buy into. So if you love being able to look at numbers and track food, then obviously you can use my fitness palette. If you like some more strict boundaries and you like to know where your bread's buttered and go, okay, I can have that, I can have this, I can have that, I'm gonna make sure I do this for breakfast, then you've got something that's a method that works for you as you and your personality type. So it's all down to the person, but you have to try shit to find out whether you like it or not. If you have never tried a diet before, 
don't worry about what diet you try, just fucking try something. And then you'll quickly find out if it's working for you and whether you like it or not. You know, the key is to try something. If it gets you results and you don't feel super duper deprived or you don't feel like you're fucking eating jail food, then you're on, you, you can be on the right path. But if you feel deprived or you feel super, super restricted or you feel like you couldn't go out and you know, have a different food source or you, you, you feel like you have to eat the same thing every single day, you need to change up your method for sure. So I'm going to go and teach this. I'm going to go and eat some food, cereal and protein powder for sure. And yeah, let's go with the day. So that was such an interesting podcast. I'm so glad we did it and I'm glad that we're doing face-to-face stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I really fucking hate watching the Zoom podcasts. So to be able to do face to face to face stuff, just like the chicken butty, my apologies. <laughs> to be able to watch sit down podcast with two people is so so much more entertaining, and actually you just feel better watching it and listen, and talking it as well as as I've been a part of a load of podcasts before. So it's gonna be really really awesome to do this on a week to week basis. So it's really really sick. Now the rest of my day is boring, so I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you very much. Another YouTube vlog uh, next week is gonna be about the whole element of where my muscle building phase is at, how I'm gonna build back up, what my tra- training routine is, what my assistance is, what, what I'm doing nutritionally, and what's happening in terms of body composition wise as well. So guys, check that out next week. Uh, like, subscribe, and comment, and I really, really appreciate it, guys. Chat to you soon.